I'm standing in the epicenter of the ghost town of Etna, a turpentine camp that was recently discovered in the 1990s by a survey crew. Um, and apparently for the previous 70 some odd years, 80 years, it was, um, I want to say undiscovered. People that worked here knew about it, and maybe some hunters knew about it, but the general public didn't know anything about it. This is the uh, only turpentine camp in the world, which is on the National Register of Historic Places. This is the kiln area. We call this the kiln um, for obvious reasons. This is uh, where the turpentine was brought to be heated and boiled down and distilled, um, or I'm sorry, the sap was brought to be uh, distilled into turpentine. Turpentine is a derivative of uh, pine tree sap. So um, this camp, as you, you can look out here, this is uh, all that's left of it basically now. I'm sure there's a cemetery or two out here. Uh, there's remains of cabins. There are some chimney remains, fragments of bricks throughout, etc. But um, when the archaeologists came in the 90s at the behest of the surveyors, I guess the state, whomever was doing the survey, um, they took and cataloged, they removed and cataloged over 200 uh, artifacts. So basically, you know, in, in common vernacular, all the good stuff is gone, uh, except for, I don't know if they didn't find it or, or they just recently found it or what, but except for that kiln. Here is an old, uh, to, the, to the naked eye, just a pit in the ground. I'm guessing this is a vat. This is either a precursor to heating up the, uh, which we've seen before in turpentine camps, we've seen these 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 vats that are brick lined, and used for heating up uh, the uh, the sap and distilling it. And this may have been a precursor to the kiln, and they may have decided just to make a more permanent, excuse me, situation, and um, you know, and created that. Uh, and moved their operation over there. In fact, they may have used the bricks from the the, the hole here to to make this. I, I don't know, and we'll we'll never know. There's no the history on this is very very sparse um, at best. So um, we're standing just in, like I said, the epicenter. This is where, for miles around, the camp was pretty spread out. The 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 town, if you will, it was at one point on the maps of Florida in the early 20th century um, and um, the, the town was fairly spread out. There, there were um, over 200 people here at any one time living, which means there would have been you know, a couple of thousand at least over a 25 year, 30 year period. This camp was started in the uh, late 19th century and abandoned and petered out simply because they deforested everything um, in the early 20th century. Uh, it's just, it's it's a very, very good sized camp. There's a lot of dense uh, underbrush here. You're never gonna find everything unless you remove all the underbrush. Um, so, the the, um, the forest around here, around here for miles and miles and miles would have provided um, the the sap, the raw product for the, for the turpentine, and crews would have gone out uh, exploring, maybe for days. I mean, just going out and cutting. Uh, there would have been a crew to go out and cut the the slices into the trees, which we call cat face trees for obvious reasons because the, the way the slices are are made. Uh, cups are then inserted beneath the slices over a period of time, and I don't know how long the um, sap would have would have leaked into the into the cups and then crews eventually after a certain amount of time would have gone back to those locations and picked up the, the raw sap and brought it out here um, this would have been hot dirty hard miserable labor I, I mean I'm sure even middle management and upper management would have been uh, you know taxed to, to their limits but the people who did the actual work um, were either convicts or black men 
and that's because well convicts for obvious reasons and black men because um no one else would do the work no one else wanted to to, to be involved in this incredibly hot hard labor but they were willing to to do it for, for what i'm sure would have been a meager wage my understanding also that the company that owned these areas paid in scrip which is uh, basically cash that is only good at their store so it would have been a it would have been indentured servitude i'm not gonna call it slavery because slavery has an entirely different connotation chattel slavery is completely it certainly would have been an indentured indenturehood um you would have wound up spending all your time here you couldn't take the money anywhere else so it would have been it would have been a miserable existence for everyone uh but again, the, the people putting up the money, the people with the uh, the management people, they would have made a lot of money. They they would have done really well. So um, anyway, that this is uh, this is just an exciting, extraordinary find. Um, doesn't look like much to the naked eye, but to uh, to someone like me, this is a, this is like finding Blackbeard's treasure. Incredible, incredible sight. Um, we're not going to try to go the length and width and breadth of the entire camp. We're not. We we'll never find it all. Um, so we're just going to finish up back over here by the by the kiln. Give one more good view of the kiln. Lots of rosin balls around. Would have been a byproduct of the turpentine. And here we have the kiln again. Some fascinating. Incredible structure for the time. This is what brought me out here. I've known about it in a years. Just, uh, I was only, always under the impression that everything had been plundered. I know a lot of people have come out here that just regular Joe people and have taken things that you know souvenirs you get enough people taking the souvenir you don't really have much anymore um, but this is left so this is I saw a photograph of this from a guy that I know and, um, I was just astonished and I had to see it so we're here and for now we're gonna out, head out and conquer some other territories <laughs> or at least explore them anyway <laughs>